Pierre Foy's practices have changed since he started teaching more than 20 years ago. Now he likes to blend traditional methods with 21st century practices in his grade 8 math class, which keeps the students engaged. For example, today's learning goal was to take what the students knew about order of operations and to tackle problems that included integers. Before starting the day's problem-solving session, he makes a question available through an app called Socrative. He then watches the live results to gauge where students are at. If they're green, they've answered the question correctly. If they're red, they haven't. And so what that means is I look for the ones with the most red. They'll require the most support during this activity. Then the students work through a problem to apply their learning. At the same time, the technology coach provides additional support. Uh, if you use the green one, it won't evaluate it for you, oh, okay. but it might be easier for you to do the different steps. But what Craig O'Neill is doing today is not necessarily the only duty he has as a tech coach. There's not a really defined role on a day-to-day -day basis. you got to be really flexible. Uh, the idea being uh, to be the main elbow at the elbow support for teachers and students and administrators, whoever needs the help, to kind of bridge that technology um, with the pedagogy in the classroom. He can explain things to me in a manner that I get it. And once I've practiced it a few times, it becomes part of my program. But the students, it literally takes a very short conversation before they're saying, thank you, I get it, and off they go. When the students have completed the problem, they take turns demonstrating how they solved it. So then I did 6 divided by negative 3, which gave me negative 2. Darren says it's important that the students learn from each other. When we took it up to the front and had the band show, which is when you show different ways of solving things, uh, at that point, a lot of them had the aha moment. He also encourages students to take pictures of the work at the front. Now, I want to point out something to the class. You're preparing for EQAO next year, and of course, you know it does count for your marks. They're going to be looking for a solution that's organized in that manner, where you literally progress with the equal signs on the left, showing what you've done at each stage. So I strongly recommend screenshotting that solution. These images are saved in their ePortfolio, an online blended learning environment which is available to them right up until grade 12. They have unlimited storage and they can start storing materials in their ePortfolio much like you would in any portfolio that you carry around with you. So it's just electronic. It can be pictures, it can be videos. Both Darren and Craig find that the students are passionate about using apps and finding new ways to share their thinking, which in turn encourages deeper learning. If the students are the ones figuring out, making the plan what they're going to use, of course they're going to be more into it, more engaged, which ultimately we found, based on our data we've collected, it's going to lead to increased achievement. So. I, I just kind of labeled it, the steps I did, one, two, three, four, five, six and like the order of them, and I got 65 as my answer. When students are working purposely through the materials, when they're thinking about it, when they're interacting with it, when they're discussing with each other, when they're clarifying their thinking, it's, um, it deepens the process, it assists with consolidation, um, it takes the same problem and has, them, and has the student apply different mental processes to it, which again strengthens the consolidation in the end.